Solving Quadratic Equations by Factoring Part 2. In Solving Quadratic Equations by Factoring Part 1, Joe introduced the box method for factoring quadratic equation in, in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, when a, or the coefficient of x squared, is 1. In this lesson, quadratic equations where the coefficient of the quadratic term is not 1 will be solved such as those above with coefficients of 3, 4, and 8. These problems rise to another level of complexity. Joe will first try to solve this equation, 3n squared plus 5n minus 2 equals 0, which was the first equation Joe tried to solve in the introduction to quadratic equations before he learned to solve quadratic equations. Joe sets up his box and puts the squared term, 3n squared, in the upper left corner, and the constant term, which is negative 2, in the lower right corner of the box. As opposed to when he only had to worry about the factors to the numeric term, in this situation Joe must also be concerned about the factors of the squared term, in this case 3n squared. Fortunately, this time there are only two realistic factors for 3n squared, n and 3n, since 3 is a prime number. So he can just put them here, 3n at the top and n to the side. Next he looks for factors of the numeric term, which is negative 2, and lists them, and here they are negative 1 and 2, and also negative 2 and 1. He first puts negative 1 on the side and 2 on the top. Next, he multiplies the terms on the side by the terms on the top and fills in the boxes. The lower left box is negative 1 times 3n, which equals negative 3n, and the upper right box is 2 times n, or 2n. Then he combines the 2n terms, and negative 3n plus 2n equals negative 1n, which we represent by just n. Since negative n does not equal 5n, he knows that he needs to try another combination to make this work out. His next step is to switch the positions of the negative 1 and 2 on the top and side. And here they are switched. He multiplies them out and gets 6n in the lower left box and negative n in the upper right box. He combines like terms and sees that 6n minus n does equal 5n. So he knows that the factors of quantity 3n minus 1 and quantity n plus 1, which he places directly beneath the original trinomial, are the solutions negative 1 and 2? No, they're not. Remember the danger, danger, danger from the factoring part 1 lesson? He must separate these binomials into two equations that will give two solutions. He places 3n minus 1 equals 0 to the left and n plus 2 equals 0 to the right. For the left equation, he takes the negative 1 over to the right. The equation becomes 3n equals 1. So dividing by 3, n equals 1 third is one solution. For the right equation, he moves the 2 to the other side of the equation. The equation is now n equals negative 2, so that's the other solution. He writes the solutions in set notation, which is in brackets. Either one of these numbers, negative 2 or 1 third, could replace n in our original equation and make the equation a true statement. For this next problem, Joe will try to solve the equation 4x squared plus 2x equals 30. The phrase try to solve is important because it takes into account the possibility that this equation may not have any real solutions or that it may not be factorable and may require another method such as solving by graphing or the quadratic formula. The first thing Joe notices is that the equation can be immediately simplified by dividing each term on both sides of the equation by 2, so it becomes 2x squared plus x equals 15. Next, he needs to get 0 on the right side, so he moves the 15 over to the left, so the equation becomes 2x squared plus x minus 15 equals 0. So now it's factorable, we hope. He sets up the box and places 2x squared in the upper left corner and negative 15 in the lower right corner. Now he can place the factors of 2x squared to the top and to the side of the box. He puts 2x on the top and x to the side. He sets up a list of factors for negative 15. Those factors are negative 3 and 5, and negative 5 and 3, negative 1 and 15, and negative 15 and 1. He tries the first two factors at the top of the list. He puts the 5 on the top and the negative 3 to the left. He then multiplies out in the boxes. 5 times n becomes 5, 5 times x becomes 5x in the upper right corner and negative 3 
times 2x is negative 6x in the lower left corner. He combines the like terms, the x terms, and the result of this combination is negative 1x, or just x, and since negative x does not equal x, we know that this is not the right combination. The next logical step is to switch places of the 5 and the negative 3. And here they are, places switched. And here's the result of this replacement. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x in the upper right corner, and 5 times 2x is 10x in the lower left corner. And 10x minus 3x is 7x, which is not equal to x either. So he crosses off the top factors on the list. He goes to the next set of factors in the list. He places the 3 on top and negative 5 to the side. 3 times x becomes 3x in the top right corner, and negative 5 times 2x becomes negative 10x in the lower left corner. Combining like terms, he has negative 10x plus 3x equals negative 7x, which does not equal x, so that's not the right combination either. Next, he switches positions of the negative 5 and the 3. Here the numbers are switched, with negative 5 on top and 3 to the side. That makes 6x in the lower left corner and negative 5x in the upper right corner. Combining like terms, 6x minus 5x equals 1x, or just x, which does equal x. So now he knows that these two expressions, quantity 2x minus 5 and quantity x plus 2, 3, are the factors he's looking for. Joe now rewrites the equation in factor form, quantity 2x minus 5 times quantity x plus 3, below the standard form version of the equation. Is he done? No. He again must split up the two factors to find each solution. For the left equation, he has 2x minus 5 equals 0. For the right side equation, he has x plus 3 equals 0. The equation becomes 2x equals 5. He divides by 2 to solve, so x is 5 over 2, or 2.5, so x equals 2.5 is one of the roots or solutions. For the equation on the right, he moves the 3 to the right. The equation becomes x equals negative 3, so negative 3 is the other solution. Joe can plug in both 2.5 and negative 3 into the original equation to be sure, and they are right. This is his answer in set notation. We're going to look at one last quadratic equation in this lesson. 8x squared plus 2x equals 3. Stop the video. Try to solve this equation by factoring, then restart the video to see if your answer matches Joe's. The first thing Joe did was to move out the 3 on the right to get 0 on the right side by itself. So now he has 8x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Here's the box Joe used to factor the equation. He has the factor of quantity 4x plus 3 on the top, and the factor of 2x minus 1 on the side of the box. So we went through the list of factors to get this. The negative 4x and 6x combine to make 2x, which matches the linear term of 2x in the original quadratic equation. He rewrites the quadratic equation in factored form, so he has quantity 4x plus 3 times quantity 2x minus 1 equals 0. He splits the factored form into two equations. He has 4x plus 3 equals 0 and 2x minus 1 equals 0. Solving, he has x equals negative, one, negative 3 fourths or negative 0.75 for the left equation and n equals 1 half or 0.5 for the right equation. And here is Joe's answer in set notation in both decimal and fractional form. The business of solving by factoring when the a in the standard form is different than 1 and involves a little more complexity. Also, there are other methods besides the box method for factoring. The diamond method, bottoms up, etc. Try to find a method that works for you. Factoring this kind of trinomial requires a little more patience and flexibility. If you cannot find solutions by factoring, or if you're unsure, Joe recommends using the quadratic formula shown at the lower right. Or, if you can use a graphing calculator, solving by graphing is a great way to go. This has been Solving Quadratic Equations by Factoring, Part 2. Thanks for viewing.